Why is England called England? The answer is not as simple as you think. Where in the world was the original Scotland? Clue, it wasn't there. Does the word Welsh really mean slave? Find out as we take an etymological trip around Britain. It's time for another Rob Words. Hello, I am speaking English. But why? What I mean is, why is the language that I'm speaking called English? Yes, because it comes from England, but that doesn't actually answer the question. Why is England called England? And that's what we're going to get into now. Well, over the last millennium and a half, England has been variously called England, England, Angland, Ongland, England, and Angland. You can basically stick any vowel at the start and you get an old spelling of England, except you. I couldn't find an Ongland. But other genuine Old English names included Anglaland, Englaland, Anglenalonda, Ingaland, and Ingaland. Fun fact, England and its derivatives are the only examples in modern English of E-N-G making an ing sound. Prove me wrong. But all of those names for England boil down to the same thing. They mean the land of the Angles. The Angles were the Germanic tribe that popped over to the biggest of the British Isles in the 5th century AD from the Anglian Peninsula, that's part of modern-day Germany and Denmark. The Roman Tacitus is thought to have been the first to write about them. He called them the Angliae. But they didn't come to Britain alone. A couple of other Germanic groups popped across the North Sea at around the same time. One of them was the Saxons, and that's why we refer to the Germanic people living in Britain at the time as the Anglo-Saxons. The Saxons had come from what is now northern Germany. And a third Germanic group, the rather mysterious Jutes, also joined them in Britain. They're thought to have most likely come over from the Jutland Peninsula in modern-day Denmark, but another theory is that actually they set off from Friesland in what we now call the Netherlands. Anyway, the collective name for these Germanic invaders, the speakers of Old English, were, as I've said, the Anglo-Saxons, because the Angles and the Saxons were the bigger groups. So why does England, and by extension English, end up being named after the Angles and not the Saxons? Well, probably because the Angles really went all in on their new home, shipping their royals over and commanding larger and more powerful kingdoms, plus the Saxons, still kind of had their own thing going on back home. To call England Saxon land would have been weird, given that there was another Saxon land over in Saxony. So land of the Angles it is. And it is remarkable how consistently it's known as that. All of these names just mean land of the Angles. How's that for brand recognition? Pretty much everyone in the world agrees that England is the land of the Angles. Except that is, for its nearest neighbours. The Irish Gaelic name for England is, well, hold on, I actually got an Irish friend, Arthur, to pronounce this one for me. Sassana. Yeah, and that means land of the Saxons, as does the Scots Gaelic word. Come on, guys, I've just explained all this. Meanwhile, in Wales, speakers of Welsh, which is a different type of Celtic language to Irish, also prefer not to call England the land of the Angles. They call it Chloiga which was the medieval Welsh name for a large chunk of what is now England. So the Welsh language word for England is, you know, pretty inoffensive. Unfortunately, the Anglo-Saxon name for Wales was not. The story goes that the Old English word for the Welsh meant slave. Well, slave or foreigner. Neither of which is very nice, I'm willing to go on the record as saying. However, I also want to go on the record as saying it isn't actually quite as simple as that. Yes, an Old English word for both foreigner and slave was this, weal, from which we get Welsh. It's like weal-ish. But a look at the words relatives across other Germanic languages shines a light on some important nuance. You're going to enjoy that when I get to it in a second. But that clearly quite unpleasant link between the English name for Wales and the enslavement remains something of a sore point, and there have actually been calls for the name of Wales to be changed. In fact, just a few weeks ago, a petition was started calling for Cymru, the Welsh language name, to be used in English as well. 
Now, whether or not you think that is a reasonable or ridiculous suggestion may very well depend on the news source you read about it in. But if you use this video's sponsor, Ground News, you got the full story. Ground News is an app and website that gathers news articles from around the world and allows you to compare coverage to get the full picture. In the case of the Welsh name change story, you can see how the language in the headlines varied. The National played it with a pretty straight bat, simply reporting the number of people who'd signed the petition, whereas Sky News stressed the name Wales's link to the idea of foreignness and Welsh feelings of being oppressed by the English. Ground News is also fantastic for seeing how coverage of any story varies across the political spectrum. It tells you a bias rating for each source and also how reliable an outlet is. Plus, Ground News has a wonderful blind spot feature that shows you stories that only one side of the argument is covering. Ground News is a brilliant tool for cutting through the nonsense and getting to the truth. So go to grounds.news slash robwords to get 40% off unlimited access on the Vantage subscription and start getting the full story. So back to Wales and that old English word that gives us the word Welsh. Its equivalents in other Germanic languages tell a fascinating story. Because outside of Anglo-Saxon England, the word doesn't mean slave or even really foreigner. Its equivalent in the ancestral languages of German and Dutch refer very specifically to speakers of foreign languages. And actually, even more specifically than that, they refer to speakers of Romance languages, like Italian and French. That's why the French speakers in Belgium are to this day called the Walloons. Oh, and probably my favourite fact from this whole video, the word walnut is so called because it's the nut we got from the speakers of these weird Romance languages. It's the nut we got from the Romans. Anyway, when the Anglo-Saxons and Jutes landed in the British Isles, the Romans had already hopped it. But the Germanic tribes used that term, weal, to refer to speakers of a different but equally incomprehensible set of tongues, the languages of the Celts, or the Celtic Britons, as we call them. The Anglo-Saxons then proceeded to enslave some of these native Celtic inhabitants. So Welsh came to mean slave. And the rest of the Celtic Britons end up being forced to the western fringes of Great Britain, an area that the Anglo-Saxons therefore refer to as Wales, because it's where all the Welsh are. But that Wales didn't just encompass modern-day Wales. For example, it also included the southwestern tip of modern-day England, an area called Cornwall. And the wall at the end of Cornwall comes from the same root as Wales. The Cornwallas were the Cornish Welsh, the Britons of Cornwall. There were other variants too, such as the North Wales, the North Welsh, who were in modern-day Wales, and even the Strathclyde Welsh, who could be found in modern-day Scotland and northwestern England. Wales is also related to the Roman name for France, Gallia, and the Celts who lived there, the Gauls. I've talked before about how W's and G's swap around when Romance and Germanic speakers get together. It's why we have Guardian and Warden, Guarantee and Warranty, William and Guillaume. And that link between Welsh and Gaul is made all the clearer by the French name for Wales, Pied Gal, which is basically land of the Gauls. Pied Gal and Wales are what we might call exonyms, because they're the names given to a country by outsiders, by people who don't live there, although obviously most Welsh people now do call it Wales too. The opposite of an exonym is the name that the locals call a place, and that's referred to as an endonym. And I've already mentioned that the Welsh language word for Wales is Cymru, which is thought to derive from a Celtic word simply meaning compatriot. So effectively, that's the opposite of foreigner, isn't it? So where the English are calling them outsiders, the Welsh are calling themselves insiders. I think that's kind of neat. Moving on from Wales, where do you think, so far as the Anglo-Saxons were concerned, the Scots lived? That's right, in Ireland. It's true, the Roman name for the inhabitants of the big island next door to Britain were the Scottus, long before the Supreme Court of the United States came along. The origins of that post-classical Latin term are 
uncertain, but one of the theories is that it's from the name of a mythical princess from the traditions of a Gaelic-speaking peoples who originated in Scythia. That's an awful long way away from Ireland, but it is thought that they may have somehow ended up there. It's just a theory. Anyway, there are examples in Old English of the word Scotland being used to mean Ireland. This quote uses the Latin name for the island of Ireland, Hibernia, and clarifies it by saying, which we call Scotland. That's cool, right? People living in what is modern day Scotland only start being called Scots when the Irish Scots cross over to the bigger island next door from the 5th century onwards. Then modern day Scotland is dominated by a group called the Picts, who got their name from the Latin word Picti, which meant painted people, apparently because of their tendency to decorate their skin. But Scotland doesn't start being called Scotland for a few more centuries. In the meantime, the area where the Celtic Scots and the Picts are living gets the name Alapa, which is actually one of the official names of Scotland even today, and comes with an extremely confusing adjective form. Throughout all of this, by the way, Ireland is called Ireland. Apart from the occasional reference to it as Scotland, the Old English name for the island to the west is Ireland, a name based on the Irish Celtic name for it, Eru. That in turn originates from the name of a Celtic goddess of the same name. The modern Irish descendant of that word, Era, is used today to mean both the island and the state of Ireland, which excludes Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. Actually, did you know that the full name of the UK is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That's what it says on my passport. Great Britain is the big island with England, Scotland and Wales on it. So where does the word Britain come from then? Well, it's from the Roman name for the island Britannia. Britannia in turn comes from the ancient Greek name for the British Isles Britannica, which the Greeks are believed to have taken from the Celts who were living there. The theory goes that those Celts were calling themselves something along the lines of Pritani, which is thought to have also meant painted or tattooed people, like Picti did for the Romans. So what's so great about Great Britain? Good question. Well, it's not actually a boast. It doesn't mean excellent Britain, even though our overcrowded trains and polluted rivers really are world class these days. The Great is likely just a reference to the island's size in relation to the other Britain, Brittany, in northern France. It might surprise you to hear that the local language in Brittany, Breton, is closer to Welsh than it is to any other language. It's a Brythonic Celtic language, just like Welsh and Cornish. The people of Brittany share a huge amount of Celtic heritage with the Welsh, and the plot thickens yet further when you consider that the Irish Gaelic name for Wales means Little Britain. There's one more term for Britain, the great one, that I should mention, and that is Albion. This is another name used by the Romans, but whereas Britannia referenced the people, Albion is thought to have been more descriptive. There are two compelling theories for where the word comes from. One is that it's from the Latin for white, albus. Albus Dumbledore means white bumblebee, so far as I can tell. Why would Britain be white? Well, the first thing that greets you if you approach it at the right angle is the white cliffs of England's southern coast. The other theory is that Albion, like Britannia, ultimately comes from a local Celtic word, this time meaning world. The world of the Celts. It's also where that word Alipa, meaning Scotland, comes from, and the modern Welsh and Irish words for Scotland too. Right, if you've made it this far into the video, I reckon you can handle the really geeky stuff that I'm about to get into. I just very quickly want to look at the rest of the British Isles, because you don't just have Great Britain, you've got all these other little islands floating around it. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So Shetland's name is of Scandinavian origin. The old Icelandic name for it was Hjaltland, but that sound at the start morphed into a sh sound in English, the same as the Yorkshire village of Shipton was called Hipton under the Vikings. The older Scots name for Shetland was Yetland, and that was spelt with this fun letter Joch at the start, a letter that's frequently misread as a Z. 
hence the name of Shetland, is sometimes recorded as Zetland. The Marcus of Zetland is actually still an official title. The nearby islands of Orkney also have a very old Scandinavian name. The old Icelandic name for them was Orkneyar, and the old English name for them was basically Orkney as well. The earliest written reference to the Hebrides is from the Roman Pliny the Elder. He calls them the Hebudes, and it's thought the word Hebrides might simply be a misreading of that. The Latin name may, like so many of the names that we've come across, come from a Celtic name for the people who were living there. The most satisfying theory about that is that these people may have been called the Epidii, or horse people. Maybe Gulliver just took a wrong turn. The Isle of Man is unusual in that apart from Ireland, it's the only one of the places we've looked at that is not part of the United Kingdom. It's one of the British Isles, but not part of the UK. It has a rich Celtic history, having been settled by the ancient Britons and the Celts from Ireland, as well as the Vikings from Norway. Its parliament, the Tynwald, is the oldest continuous parliament in the world. Also, Manx cats don't have tails. Anyway, the name Isle of Man is thought to come from the name of a Celtic sea god, Mananan MacLear, who is said to have ruled the island. The Isle of Man has its own language, closely related to Irish, and in Manx Gaelic, as it's called, the island is Elanvanan, or Manan, which means Mananan's island. The English name for the Welsh island of Anglesey is thought to be of Old Norse origin and has nothing to do with the Angles. One of the theories is that it means Hook Island. Another one is that it means Ongles Island, but um, no one actually knows who Ongle was. No one's quite sure why the Isles of Scilly are called Scilly, but the most fun theory is that the Romans loved the salted fish that they imported from there so much they named the islands after them. So that would mean the name is a corruption of the Latin for salted ling type of fish. The Channel Islands of Jersey and Guernsey are thought to be named after Vikings. They probably mean something like Gears Island and Granis Island, and the Isle of Wight was known to the Romans as Vectis, or Insula Vecta. Exactly why isn't known, but it's thought it might well come from a Welsh term, meaning work. And with that, our work here is done. If you've enjoyed this, you should watch this video next, and also sign up for my free newsletter for more wordy fun once a week at zero cost. Thanks.